In boxing, every single fighter has a unique and compelling story, but nobody's is more touching than Leo Santa Cruz's, who's been overcoming adversity since he was born. The son of Mexican immigrants, his family have battled extreme hardship with massive health issues and serious poverty, as well as they have literally fought their way to a better existence. He is a three division world champion who lives a life of humility and kindness. And I sat down with Leo Santa Cruz as he opened up about his incredible story. Leo Santa Cruz, he goes punches and punches. Santa Cruz, tremendous action. There he goes! When I step in the ring, I want to win. And you know, I thank God, I thank the fans for the support that they gave me to win this fight. Yeah, you know, I won the best I, I, against anybody. Headshots, body shots. Santa Cruz is putting on a clinic. I won the sport of boxing to remember me as a great fighter. No matter what, I was came to do a great fight and entertain them. So the last time we saw you fight was February. The longest layoff you've had between fights, though, ever in your career. It's 280 days between the two fights. You're a three-division world champ already. What does it mean to now be going for your fourth division? Greatness you know, for me is something like not many fighters can accomplish. Still champion of the world, Leo Santa Cruz. I never believed that I could become a, a three-division world champion. So. For now, to be here at this level, I still look back at it and I feel like I'm dreaming. Like, if it's not true, it means the world to me, and I'm just very happy and excited that it feels like a dream. He's everything that's good about boxing. He's definitely one of the most exciting guys right now. It's on an action-packed show every time. Is there, is there a golden number for you of how many divisions you want to win a title then? The truth, no. I, my goal was just to become world champion. I thought it was going to be really hard. I thought it was going to be something impossible. When I became world champion, I was very happy. I couldn't believe it. Then my, my dreams become, became bigger too. I said, I want to, hopefully I could try and become a four division world champion. Mm -hmm. And now the opportunity and, you know, I still can't believe it, but you know, uh, if you work hard, if you, you know, desire it, you accomplish it. I'm sure it's not lost on you that you would join yeah. this elite list of Mexican fighters who yeah. got the world titles in, in four divisions. How important is it to you to be considered one of the best Mexican fighters ever? It'll be an honor for me because I think most of fight us fighters, that's what we're fighting for, you know, to become in you know, Hall of Fame, and, uh, you know, become known after we retired that people could still talk about us. It's something that I think every fighter dreams of. You've already beaten eight world champions. Your record is 36, one and one. That one loss you already avenged in the ring as well. Do you consider yourself one of the best pound for pound? Well, right now, yes, because you know I'm the champion. Uh, people, the people are the one that put me there, and as long as they see that, think that, and it makes me happy. I want to win more world titles, and I want to continue to keep on winning. There are thousands here at the Staples Center. This place is ready to erupt. Renowned three division champion of the world. Lay You've already had so many big fights. One of the biggest was probably the first win against Abner Mahrez, which you headlined at, at Staples Center. What was that experience like? That was a great experience because it was in my hometown in LA. That's where I grew up. And Mahrez is from there too. So, you know, we both had to show who was the best LA fighter. And chance of Leo here at Staples Center. I know he was tough opponent and I wanted that felt really bad. It wasn't just for the WBA, it was also for the diamond belt. To see other people, to see all the love cheering us. It was a great atmosphere. I just love that, you know, seeing how many people we could bring to the Staples Center. It showed that we were doing something good. People loved us and that they were there to support us. Did you feel like you had more to lose in that fight because it was against another Mexican born fighter also representing LA? Yes, of course, yeah. I think I had I had more to lose in that fight because he was another fighter like me from there. And he was talking, you know, a lot. He was saying that I had never faced a fighter like him, that I wasn't going to be able to, you know, beat him. And so it became, you know, in my head, I said, I got to beat him. And I did. What did you learn about yourself in the fight against Abner Maris? Before people thought that I was just a fighter, I couldn't move or I couldn't box. And in that fight, I showed them that I could box. You know, I used my reach, 
when I fight the best fighter, it brings the best out of me. And hearing the fans you know, scream and getting excited, it makes me want to go out there and do even better. He is now the undisputed WBA featherweight champion of the world. Was that the win that you've most enjoyed in your career? It was the biggest name I have fought at the time. And you know, he's a great fighter. He's a three division world champion. It put me up there and with the big guys. To be at the elite point that you are in your career, your, your training always has to be on point. How do you feel like you stand out in your preparation compared to other fighters? I think my, in my preparation, the way I stand out is that, you know, I focus, you know, uh, I don't get distracted. Uh, I know what I want and my mentality is just going forward doing that. I have seen other fighters that they're really good and everything, but they don't take the, the training seriously. Once I'm gonna fight, trying to think about the fight and trying to learn, learn every time. You never stop learning. There's a story that you've told before where your dad lines up the four brothers and he says to, to you all, one of you will become world champion one day. Did you sense at the time it would be you? No. <laughs> Always really, been really small and they say the small weights, they don't win a lot of money or they never make it. I was like, uh, I don't think it's gonna be me. And even, even my brothers, the other brothers I have, they said that they didn't think it was going to be me. But, you know, God chose me and I, I thank him. Coming up, Leo Santa Cruz reflects on his humble upbringing in South Central Los Angeles and how he learned the value of family in the midst of fame. Growing up there, it's really hard. A lot of times they cut off the light to us. We didn't cook because the gas was out. Uh, I was suffering. So family is obviously really important to you. You train with them. You've got your family constantly around you there. Talk to me about about your childhood because you've had an, a, an amazing journey to from where you started to where you are here. You know, we live in Compton. You know, right there is where you know it was really bad at that time, and you know, growing up there it's really hard. One room apartment, and I think we all slept in the in the living room. We even got uh, evicted from the apartment because you know, I was fighting in like maybe every two months, and I wasn't winning as much. And when I got the paycheck, we already owed all the money and stuff like that. So sometimes we didn't even have to pay the rent and then we had to move to another place. So how old were you when you began to feel a real responsibility to provide for the family? I think I was 17. 17 when I felt that I had the responsibility. That's where, when I signed my first contract, uh, I could have tried to go to the Olympics, but since I had the responsibility, I want to start winning money so I could help my family. You know, I, I could help them with the rent and stuff like that. And that's when I started. You used to spend a lot of time with your mom. You used to actually go and, and pick things out of the trash so that you guys could sell them and then have enough to eat for the family. How hard do you think that was for her? And were you conscious of that at the time? Yeah, I was very really conscious of it. Uh, I always saw my mom suffering. I always saw my mom worried. and. I could see in her face that she was embarrassed, you know, because sometimes we had to ask the family for money or stuff like that to, to be able to pay the, the bills and stuff. And I could see my mom, she was already desperate that we were living like that. A lot of times they cut off the light to us and we had to buy candles and we didn't cook because the gas was out. So we would have to just eat cereal, stuff like that. Leo, because of their roles in your boxing life, we, we get to hear a little bit about your brothers and see a bit from your brothers and your, your father, obviously. Yeah. One person we don't get to hear much about is your mum, yeah. Elodia. She's making your favourite meal. Tell me about this meal. Yeah, no, you know, my favourite meal has always been mole since I was a kid. I could eat that even three times a day. Was this like a meal that you guys would have on a special occasion? Or? We grew up really poor. Uh, this one, she'll make it once in a while. Cause it's easy to make and stuff like that, but it still costs, you know, that you have to buy the chicken and stuff like that. So it was like, when she made that, I was really, like, really happy. Para usted fue una ocasión especial cuando cuando cocinaba mole para la familia entera. Sí. Como a veces, una vez por semana o cada dos semanas. How was that for you, being here in the United States and, and having your, your kids here and, and, and having that daily battle to try and make sure that you had 
enough for them. Sí, es que para nosotros fue, fue difícil. Los, el, al principio, fue, mm -hmm. cuando ellos estaban chiquitos, era bien, estuvo, fue bien duro para nosotros. What did you learn from your mom growing up? Yeah, you know, uh, what I learned from my mom is, you know, to be noble, you know, humble. Mm -hmm. To always, you know, no matter whatever you have, just, you know, be the same person. And that's how I am since, you know, I still act like if I have nothing, you know, when mm -hmm. Some people are like, oh, you're the champ, you could do this. I'm like, no, I'm, I still act like I'm not a champ. Like, no matter what, uh, I'm still being the same person and I'll do like if I have nothing. Now when you look at the, the life that you have here, how proud do you feel of your son who's, who's been key in providing this for you? Sí. Él fue el que empezó, él es el, él empezó mucho más chico que, que todos los demás. Mm -hmm. Él era el más chiquito y él empezó a los ocho años a entrenar. Y pues no sé, yo, yo este, como no, no me gustaba, yo, yo nunca pensé que llegáramos a, que llegara él a tener uh -huh. todo lo que tiene. You talked about how happy it makes you to, to, to bless your mom financially and, and her security and, and the, the fact that she no longer has to struggle. Very different to what it used to look like. You've got a massive affinity for cars. Is that your guilty pleasure? Yes, I think so. Yeah, that's the, I think that's where I have wasted most of the money in cars. Do you see it as a waste? Well, not not waste, because you know it's something we work hard for, and it just you know, makes us happy. As little kids, when we're growing up, we love cars, and you know, every kid's dream, I think, is you know when they grow up, you wanna buy you know the nice cars that you saw growing up. And was this it, the first flashy one you bought? Yes, it was. Yeah. You know, uh, my brother saw it in a car show. Uh -huh. it, came, it came custom rate and everything. Uh -huh. So I was like, let's let's go for it. So this one's your baby. Yeah, this one's this. Then you upgraded even further. Yeah. You went up to this one. This yeah. was the dream car. Yeah, this is my always my was my dream car since you know when I was a little boy, and I said if I am able to make it one day, if I win good money, this will be my dream car. But how did you get the car? I got it from Mayweather, actually, you know. Did you negotiate on price? Did Floyd give you a deal? Yeah, I told him, yeah, it, it only had 2,000 miles, the car. Uh -huh. It was like brand new, and he got me a good price. It, yeah. This is a crazy yeah. transition, though, yeah. for you. This is so different to where you came from. And yes. You either struggled for money for the bus, yes. and then you got to the place, and you did have a car, but what kind of car was that? Yeah, it was a $400 car. It was a it Thunderbird, yeah. It worked, at least, yeah, it, that was the thing that it did work. And it took us to the gym, and you know, it didn't waste that much gas. You know, my dad said, oh, one day we're gonna have a, you know, nice cars if you guys keep working hard in the gym and we're gonna do it. And thank God we did. Can we, can we have a ride? Yeah, of course, let's go. Let's take a spin. <laughs> How do I do this? Yeah, you just put this up, you just put it up. I don't get it. No? Oh. Yeah. No. So <laughs> it's too complicated. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it does look a easy. Thin, yeah. <laughs> What's the fastest you've ever ridden it? The fastest, maybe like 120, 130, but only one time. Yeah, you give this to your son, that's a nice gift. Yeah. Leo picking up the unanimous decision. I try to do my best. The first thing that when I step in the ring is I don't want to let my dad down. Three division world champion now. Obviously your dad went through a long struggle too and invested massively in you to, to get to you to this point. He's had a huge impact on your life and, and your career as well, of course. Tell me about him. Yeah, you know, my dad, he's, uh, I think, one of the biggest inspirations in my life because he struggled a lot too and everything. He's always been a strong guy. He was always showed us how to be really tough. I think my dad is the one that is, the, you know, the man of the family. I see him as the, the boss and whatever he says, that's what we would do. I don't know, somebody told me that if, something ever happened to him, or I don't know if I just thought it in my head, that if my dad wasn't here, I think I would probably quit. Up next, Leo Santa Cruz relives the moment when he learned his father was diagnosed with bone cancer and how he built up the courage to deliver the news. I told him that he had cancer. His first words, he said, this don't scare me. As long as I fight it, I'm not gonna let cancer beat me. A few years ago, your dad was diagnosed with cancer. Do you remember the moment that you found out? Yes, I remember. We wanted to go to a vacation in Hawaii. All of us, the whole brothers, kids, everything, we went. And we really couldn't even enjoy it because my dad was over there and he had fever. He, his uh, back was hurting. First, they didn't know what it was. Then later, they found out, they told us, oh, he has cancer. And when I heard that, I got, you know, started crying. I was like, 
how can this be happening? You know, that now that we have made it and now he has cancer, he, why, why is this happening to us? You know, when you hear cancer, that's what happens. You know, people die. So it was really hard for me. And when they told us, then we, we went and they said, you, do you guys want to tell your dad? And I was oh, the one. you delivered yeah, the news? I delivered the news. You personally? Yes, I did. I went to sit next to him and I grabbed him and I told him that he had cancer. And he was like, mm, I cannot hear already. This don't scare me. That's the first, first words he said, that cancer didn't scare him. As long as I fight it, I'm not gonna let cancer beat me. And he was really tough. It's incredible when you see him in the gym now and he's still very much the, he's the boss in the gym. Um, he's in a wheelchair, but he's watching you sparring, he's giving you orders, he's got his eye on whoever's hitting the bags. Do you think that his role in the gym and in boxing and with you is what has given him some of his strength and, and carried him through this battle? And definitely, it, that has been, because you know, when we see him struggling, when he's in pain, we tell him, Dad, why don't you stay at home, just stay and rest? He's like, no, if I stay at home, I'll die faster, that's gonna kill me. If I go to the gym, that gives me motivation, it get, that relaxes me and it makes me happy. So that way he's always in the gym because he loves it, that's his passion. And he says that if it wouldn't be for the gym or boxing, he would have probably, you know, be gone away. Sube la mano. Muy bien, Leo. Muy bien. Salte de ahí, Leo. Sube la mano. Sí, salte de ahí, Leo. It's known that you've had a long battle with bone cancer, but you're still here supporting Leo at the gym every day. No lo tomo mucho en cuenta. Así me esté muriendo, yo estoy aquí en el gimnasio. Hay veces que tengo el suero puesto y yo estoy aquí. O sea, yo nomás podiéndome subir al carro y lo hago de venirme a, a estar aquí con él para trabajar. El cáncer está dormido. Esa yo creo la voy a tener de por vida porque el cáncer, dice el, el doctor, que si regresa, ya no lo puede tener. Okay. O sea, puede terminar conmigo. Pero eso no me asusta a mí. Yo le echo ganas porque la quimioterapia no me, no, no me, este, no me, no me rinde a mí. It's obvious that you're the guy that's in charge, but you also see the whole family here working as a unit, kind of preparing the training and, and making this training possible for Leo. How proud do you feel when you see all your, your sons here working together, supporting Leo? O sea, siempre hemos estado juntos y, y espero que desde aquí para adelante síganos igual, porque no es fácil ganar un título. O sea, tiene que ir bien preparado y no dejarse pegar. Buena defensa, buena condición y todo eso lo, lo sabe hacer. ¿Tiene algún sueño más para su hijo o ya lo está viviendo todo? Pues sí, o sea, ganar este título y este, terminando, o sea, los 35 años yo quiero que ya deje de pelear. O sea, ya no, ya no quiero que pelee más. Que disfrute lo que ha ganado porque hay mucho peleador que no, que no este, disfruta lo que, lo que gana. You're a father of three now. Yes. Three of the cutest kids I've ever seen. Yeah. Your firstborn son, yeah. who you called Al, you named him after Al Heyman, who's your boxing manager, who's a very well-respected and powerful figure within the sport. Also a very mysterious figure for most of us who don't know him yeah. within the sport. Yeah. Who is he to you and, and what does he mean to you that you wanted to give him the honor of naming your son after him? I think I have a special relationship with him. He has become like, like a father to me, like another father, you know. He cares for me like if I was his son. He calls me like every week, every two weeks, and tells me how I'm doing. He helped me out a lot. And he's the one that helped me get the, the house for my mom. He, he got into my heart so much that I said, you know, I have to repay him. I have to, you know, show him my appreciation back. I thought about my son. If I ever have a son, I will name him after him. Still to come, Leo Santa Cruz looks ahead to his pay-per-view title bout against Miguel Flores on November 23rd and describes what he wants his legacy to be. I want the sport of boxing to remember me as a great fighter. That's a great mixing word that I always came to entertain and that they love to watch. Santa Cruz on the attack, pouring it on. Brutal shot being landed by Santa Cruz here. El Tenor Moto, he is on top of the world. November 23rd, it's pay-per-view. How do you feel about being the co-feature on, on a pay-per-view? I'm excited. I want to be in the big cards. That's where I want to be, and now it's a dream come true. I'm very honored. I'm happy, excited, and I want to go for the 4-4 title.
I want to go out there and just give my, my fans a great fight. Have you watched tape on Miguel Flores? Yes, he's a hungry fighter. He comes and throws a lot of punches, kind of like I do. He throws the combination. He has good shots. He has a style that comes forward. Forward, pressuring, pressuring. And he has some good shots. He has a good body shot. He has a good uppercut, hook. What a shot! You can never blink an eye because he could knock you out in any second. And you know, he's young. He's young and this is opportunity for a world title. So he's gonna come with everything and that's what makes him more dangerous. So let's say you get your fourth division win. What should we expect from you in, in 2020? I want the big names. The, the, the names that I'm thinking of right now is Gary Russell or Javante Davis. Those are the names I want. How do you want the sport of boxing to remember you? What do you want them to say about Leo Santa Cruz, the boxer? I, I want the sport of boxing to remember me as a great fighter, you know, as a great um, Mexican word that always came to fight, that always came to entertain, and that they love to watch. I want them to, you know, later when I'm retired, they could still be talking about me, that I was a great fighter, that no matter what, I always came to do a great fight and entertain them. And what about your personal legacy to those mm -hmm. who are close to you and, and, and love you? Mm -hmm. What do you want them to remember about you? Yes, that, you know, I did this for my family, that I, everything I'm doing, is thinking about them and I want them to, you know, have a good future and not to, having to worry about what I had to worry when I was small, when I was growing up. Leo, really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. It's been fantastic and super interesting to, to yeah. listen to your account of your life. You're massively impressive. Thank you very me. much. I wish you all the best. November 23rd, live on pay-per-view. Yeah. We'll be watching. Thank you. Well, if you enjoyed that clip, make sure you click uh, somewhere around here and subscribe from Fight Highlights to exclusive interviews. We have got everything you need as a boxing fan right here on PBC on Fox.